Do you ever feel like you're trapped in a cycle of difficulties with no end in sight? Are you struggling to find hope in a world that seems to offer nothing but challenges? In this video, we focus on a fundamental principle of Buddhism, finding hope and resilience in the face of adversity. Lesson 1. Remember to live in the present. We learn from impermanence that both good and bad things happen quickly. When we're happy or successful, it's important to enjoy the moment without holding on to it. In the same way, when we are going through hard times or pain, knowing that they will pass can help us feel better. By focused on the present, we can handle life's ups and downs calmly, knowing that the only thing that stays the same is change. A lot of the pain in our lives comes from attachment, which is the urge to hold on to wants, things, people, and even our identities. Buddhism says that clinging to things makes you unhappy because nothing lasts forever. Putting too much stock in things that will change makes us vulnerable to failure and pain. Letting go of connection is a part of focusing on the present moment. It means not being too focused on getting certain results or hanging on to certain expectations. We can instead go through life with an open mind and heart, ready to handle whatever comes our way with grace and ease. While this doesn't mean we shouldn't have goals or ambitions, it does mean we shouldn't be attached to the results of our efforts. Say you're trying to reach a job goal, it's normal to want to be successful. However, if you get too attached to one result, like a certain job title or pay, you could miss out on other chances that come your way. You can adapt to new situations and make the most of whatever happens if you stay in the present and are open to different options. Focusing on the present moment and practicing awareness can be easy to do. Two easy ways are mediation and mindful breathing. These techniques are at the heart of Buddhism and have been shown to make people happier, less stressed, and better able to control their emotions. When you practice mindful breathing, you pay attention to your breath as it comes in and goes out of your body. You can do this anywhere, at any time. All you have to do is take a few deep breaths and focus on how the air feels coming in and out of your nose or how your chest rises and falls. This helps you keep your mind on the present, away from fears and other things that are bothering you. Meditation, on the other hand, is a more structured practice in which you sit still and don't judge your thoughts, feelings, or experiences. There are different kinds of meditation. For example, in concentration meditation, you focus on one thing, like your breath or a phrase. In insight meditation, you pay attention to how your thoughts and feelings work. Mindful breathing and meditation can both help you become more aware and open to what is happening. They help you keep your mind calm and focused so that you can deal with life's difficulties more effectively. These habits can help you learn more about yourself and the world around you over time, which can make you happier and more at peace. Focusing on the present moment also means accepting simplicity. Today's world moves quickly, and it's easy to get caught up in the chaos, always wanting more and better. Schedules are often full of things to do, and minds are full of thoughts that never end. This leaves little time for being still and thinking, but enjoying the little things in life is often the way to find true happiness. Buddhism teaches people how important it is to keep things simple. Getting rid of unnecessary things in our lives can help us focus on what's important. This could mean getting rid of junk in your space, setting priorities for your time, or canceling plans you don't need to keep. Getting rid of the extra makes room for awareness and presence. For example, being in nature can help you connect with the present moment and enjoy the simple things in life. The peace and beauty of nature can help us remember that the world is naturally peaceful and balanced, which can make us feel more grounded and focused. Nature can be a safe place to stop and be fully present, whether we're taking a walk in the park, a hike in the mountains, or just sitting by a river. Practicing thanks is another way to stay in the present. Being grateful means noticing and enjoying the good things in our lives, no matter how small they are. When we think about what we have instead of what we don't have, we change our mindset from one of lack to one of wealth. There are many ways to practice gratitude. One way is to keep a gratitude book and write down a few things you're thankful for every day. 
This easy activity can help you notice the good things in your life more and make it a habit to look for the good, even when things are hard. The Buddhist idea of interdependence, which says that everything and everyone is related, is closely linked to the idea of gratitude. Expressing thanks means recognizing all the things and people that make us happy. Being acknowledged can make us more humble and kind, which can help us feel more linked to other people and the world around us. Finding joy in everyday things is another part of focusing on the present. We often wait for big things to happen or accomplishments to make us happy, and we forget to enjoy the small things in our daily lives. True happiness, on the other hand, doesn't depend on outside events. It comes from within and can be grown by being mindful. Enjoy the taste of your coffee in the morning, the sun on your face, or the sound of laughter for a moment. We can have these little moments of happiness every day, but we have to be aware of them and value them. We can find happiness in the everyday things if we give our all to whatever we're doing. A Buddhist term for this is mindful savoring. It means being fully present and involved in the experience, like when you eat, listen to music, or spend time with people you care about. Taking the time to enjoy these moments can make our lives better and help us feel happy and healthy. Focusing on the present moment means giving up and accepting what is. It means to see things for what they are and accept them without fighting or denying them. This doesn't mean giving up or being passive. It means letting go of the need to be in charge of everything and believing that life will work out as it should. Acceptance is a powerful skill to have because it frees us from fighting truth. We make our own pain when we fight against what is. But even when things are hard, we can find peace and understanding when we accept them as they are. When we accept what is, we can deal with the problems in life with knowledge and kindness instead of fear or anger. Lesson 2. Moving around can help you feel better. This idea that mind and body are linked is very important in Buddhism. This view of the whole person says that our mental and physical health can affect each other. Not only does being busy improve our physical health, but it also helps us think more clearly and calmly. People believe that everything is connected, which means that taking care of our bodies can improve our mental and emotional health. For example, when we do things like yoga, tai chi, or walking, we not only make our bodies stronger and more flexible, but we also become more aware and present. These activities help us pay attention to how our bodies feel, our breath, and the way our bodies move. This attention helps us tune out the noise in our minds and be in the present moment. A deep feeling of peace and calm can come from this type of moving meditation. Moving around can help you feel better, especially when you're having a hard time emotionally. Our energy can get stuck when we're feeling too much or stuck in bad feelings. It can be hard to deal with our thoughts and move on when we feel stuck. Getting some exercise can help get rid of this stuck energy and let it move more freely. Take the simple act of going for a walk as an example. A gentle but effective way to clear our minds and feel better is to go for a walk. Endorphins are natural mood boosters that our bodies make when we walk. Walking steady motion can be relaxing and help lower worry and anxiety. Being outside in nature can make these benefits even stronger since being around natural light and fresh air has been shown to improve mental health. Dancing is another way to move that can help you feel better. Dancing lets us show how we feel physically and mentally. It can be a happy and freeing experience that helps us let go of feelings we have been holding in and connect with our true selves. Dancing to music can make you feel good and give you a sense of freedom, whether you do it by yourself in your living room or with a group. Moving around physically can also be a metaphor for making good changes in our lives. We can change our mood by moving our bodies, and we can also change our situations for the better. It's important to remember that we can make changes, even if they're small, when we feel stuck or lost. These small steps can build energy that leads to bigger changes. For example, if you're feeling alone, joining a class or exercise with other people can help you feel like you're part of a group and connect you with others. Group activities, like an exercise class, a hobby group or a volunteer organization can help you meet new people and make friends who can help you. 
Having these social ties can help you feel better and give you hope when things are hard. If you're having trouble with stress or worry, working exercise into your daily life periodically can be very helpful. Stress hormones like cortisol levels go down when you exercise, while levels of endorphins and serotonin go up. These chemicals are linked to better happiness and well-being. This change in biochemistry can help ease anxiety and sadness, making it easier to deal with the problems that come up in life. Adding mindfulness to physical tasks can make them more powerful. Being fully present during physical tasks, paying attention to how your body feels, and moving with purpose are all parts of mindful movement. Connecting with your body and becoming more aware and present can be helped by this exercise. In yoga, for instance, each action is timed with the breath, which creates a calm flow. Practitioners are told to bring their attention to the present moment by focusing on how their bodies feel and how they are aligned. Being aware of the present moment helps to calm the mind and lower stress, which makes yoga a strong tool for mental and emotional health. Start with small doable steps if you're not used to being active every day. You could do this by going for a short walk around your area, stretching for a few minutes, or taking the yoga class for the first time. Increase the length and volume of your activities slowly as you get used to them. Pick things to do that you enjoy and that make you happy. Finding something you enjoy doing, like dancing, swimming, hiking, or a sport, will help you stay inspired and keep up with your routine. Make goals that you can reach and enjoy your growth as you reach them. A simple way to do this would be to promise to go for a 10-minute walk every day or to go to an exercise class once a week. Setting clear goals can help you stay on track and keep you going. Be present while you do your physical tasks. Pay attention to your breathing, how your body feels, and what's going on around you. Being mindful can make the action more helpful and help you connect with yourself more deeply. Pay attention to how your body feels before, during, and after you work out. Avoid pushing yourself too hard and then listen to what your body is telling you. Resting and getting better are also important parts of living a healthy, peaceful life. If you like being around other people, you might want to join a group exercise or work out with a friend. Going to group classes or working out with a friend can make exercise more fun and give you a sense of responsibility. Moving around can change your mood and is an easy and effective way to feel better and get through tough times. Moving your body can help get rid of stuck energy, boost your happiness, and bring about good changes in your life. You can become more aware of and connected to the present moment by bringing mindfulness into your physical tasks. Remember that movement isn't just working out, it's also about making your life move forward and flow. It means taking steps, no matter how big or small, to change your energy and let new things happen. Moving around, whether it's walking, dancing, yoga, or something else, can change your mood and give you hope and strength. Third lesson, be nice to yourself. In Buddhism, being kind to yourself is an important practice that helps you understand, accept, and be compassionate with yourself. It is a deep way to take care of your mental and emotional health, especially when life gets too much. It can be hard to put self-kindness first in a society that values being perfect and always getting things done. But accepting this practice is very important for building inner peace and strength. Being kind to yourself also means learning more about yourself. This means not judging your thoughts, feelings, and physical experiences as you pay attention to them. Being aware of your inner world and knowing when you need kindness and care is important. For instance, you might become aware of how stressed or worried you are. You don't have to push these feelings away or be hard on yourself for having them. Instead, you can be kind and interested in them. What do I need right now? is a simple question that can help you meet your wants with kindness instead of judgment. It's important how you talk to yourself. Negative self-talk can be very harmful because it can make you feel even worse about your shortcomings and lack of hope. Though kind words to yourself can help you feel better and give you strength. Say things to yourself like you would to a close friend when you mess up or face a problem. You could say, it's okay to make mistakes. I'm doing my best and I can learn from this. 
instead of, I'm such a failure. Self-care is an important part of being kind to yourself. Taking care of your physical, social, and mental health is part of it. There are many ways to take care of yourself, based on your wants and needs. It could include things like making sure you get enough sleep, eating well, working out, spending time in nature, or being artistic. It can also mean making time to do things you enjoy, like reading a book, taking a warm bath, or watching your favorite movie. It's also important to pay attention to your body and mind and meet their wants. Give yourself permission to rest if you're tired. Take a break and figure out what needs to be done first if you feel like you have too much to do. Self-care isn't a luxury or a selfish thing to do. It's something you need to do to stay healthy and strong. To forgive yourself, you need to be patient and understanding. Realizing that you are human and that making mistakes is a part of that means you deserve forgiveness and kindness. You can heal and grow when you forgive yourself. Forgiveness frees you from the chains of guilt and shame. Being kind to yourself also means putting yourself in places and with people that are good for you. Setting limits with people who drain your energy or bring bad things into your life could be part of this. It also means looking for people and groups that make you feel good and give you support. A supportive environment can help people feel like they belong and are connected, which is important for their mental health. Being grateful is a strong habit that can help you be more kind to yourself and improve your health in general. It means noticing and being grateful for the good things in your life, no matter how small they may be. Being grateful can help you shift your attention from what you don't have to what you do have, which can help you feel happy and satisfied. You can be more grateful by writing down every day what you're thankful for in a gratitude book. Everything from a warm cup of tea to a kind act from a friend to a beautiful sunset could do the trick. You can have a more upbeat and caring attitude toward yourself and others if you regularly think about the good things in your life. Being mindful is an important part of being kind to yourself. Being in the present moment and watching your feelings and thoughts without judging them are part of it. Mindful activities like meditation, deep breathing, and mindful movement can help you get in touch with your true self and grow in kindness and peace. You should be kind to yourself all the time, not just once. It means having a kind and caring relationship with yourself, knowing how valuable you are, and giving yourself the care and respect you deserve. Being kind to yourself can give you comfort and strength when things are hard, letting you handle problems with ease and strength. Being kind to yourself is an important part of growing spiritually and personally. Allow it to lead you when things are hard or unclear, and let it heal you and give you strength. Remember that you deserve kindness, care, and sensitivity just as much as anyone else. Being kind to yourself shows that you value yourself and makes room in your life for growth, joy, and peace. Lesson 4. Find a new hobby that gives you hope. Looking for a new hobby can be life-changing, especially when you're having a hard time finding hope. A new sense of purpose, a break from negative thought patterns, and a way to connect with others are just a few of the many benefits of hobbies. It can be hard to imagine that there are new and exciting possibilities out there when you feel stuck. Taking up a new sport can help you discover new interests you didn't know you had. Trying something new can get you excited and interested again, which can break up the monotony that often comes with feeling lost. Hobbies can give you a reason to live and make you happy, which is very important when you feel like giving up. Doing something you're really interested in makes you feel good and gives you a sense of success. This sense of accomplishment can be a strong remedy for the hopelessness that often comes with tough times. Give it a try if you've always been interested in drawing, but never got around to it. It might make you feel creatively satisfied. You'll feel like you've made progress and accomplished things as you learn new things and make art. This can really inspire you and help you take your mind off of your problems and put it on something good. There are obstacles and things to learn that come with every hobby. Taking these problems head-on can make you stronger and give you a sense of achievement. When you get past problems in a hobby, it can boost your confidence and make you feel strong in other areas of your life as well. Think about a hobby like gardening. At first, you might have trouble with different types of dirt, 
how to plant, or how to get rid of pests. But as you learn and grow, you'll see the real and imagined results of your hard work. This cycle of learning, adapting, and finally achieving can be very empowering and help you build a strong mind. Taking up a new sport can also help you meet new people. A lot of hobbies have clubs or groups that go along with them, both online and off. Meeting people who like the same things you do can give you a sense of support and connection, which can be especially helpful when things are going badly. When you start a hobby like reading for a book club or joining a local camping group, you'll have the chance to meet people who share your interests. These relationships can help you feel better, give you new ideas, and even make you friends for life. The shared experience of doing a hobby with someone can help people feel less alone and more connected. Mindfulness and present are naturally encouraged by many hobbies, which can be especially helpful when you're feeling hopeless. When you're really into something, your mind is focused on that one thing, which lets you forget about your problems and negative thoughts for a while. For instance, things like knitting and gardening need your full attention and focus. You're likely to get into a state of flow while doing these things. This is a mental state where you're totally focused on the task at hand and lose track of time. When you're in this state of flow, you can take a mental break from worry and feel calm and at ease. Buddhism tells us that there is always room for growth and renewal, even when we are in pain. Making room for hope to grow can be done by doing things that make you happy and satisfied. So, jump in and try out some new hobbies. Accept the process with an open mind and let the things that make you living bring you joy, connection, and inspiration. That way, you'll see that there is always a spark of hope waiting to be found, even when things look the worst. Buddhism gives us a map to help us on this journey. They tell us to be present in the present moment, move our bodies, treat ourselves with kindness, and do things that matter. They help us remember that bad times are a part of life and don't make us who we are. They help us remember that hope is always open and possible. When things don't go your way and you don't see any hope, remember these lessons. Don't forget that you have help. Don't forget that you are strong and smart enough to handle anything that comes your way. Always keep in mind that hope is only a breath, a step, a kind word, or a new hobby away.